is up you guys welcome or welcome back to my channel classy co and if you don't know my name is kayla so in today's video i will be addressing something a little more personal something that really hits home and that is the story behind my son's father adriel terrell webb jr and how he was violently killed july 20th of 2020 in seattle washington our hometown i want to spread awareness on our story and just share the dangers of gun violence and how it can truly affect someone's life and their loved ones, their family members, and the community that they live in. So without further ado, I don't want to make this intro too long. Let's just hop right in. But first, family and friends mourn the life of a young man gunned down in Seattle's Central District. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Aliana Gomez. And I'm David Rose. The shooting that killed Adriel Webb was just one of several in our area over the last few days. Webb was a recent high school grad. He died Monday night near an Arco gas station on 23rd Avenue and Cherry Street. And just the next day, another shooting near that same Arco as people still mourning Webb's death following his vigil. The violence is frustrating community mentors who helped the teen turn his life around. They tell Q13's Jennifer Lee the shootings have to stop before another bright future is lost. Adriel had a dream, he had a future, he had a plan. Adriel Webb's mentors say the teen was on his way to Highline College this fall to study engineering, and they know just how hard he worked to get there. We connected him with Seattle Urban Academy down in uh, the South Seattle, uh, and he just, he turned it around, and he just started working really hard, and he ended up graduating on time, which is, which is really hard to do, coming from, from where he was. But on Monday night, Seattle police were called to a shooting on the 2300 block of Cherry Street. Three people were injured and one of them died. Family and friends say the victim is Webb. It's disappointing to see that somebody will beat a lot of odds and then lose his life over nothing. On Tuesday night, loved ones held a vigil to honor Webb's life where he was described as a scholar and a servant. But gun violence brought Seattle police to Cherry Street again that night. Two people were injured. Like Adrian's mom said, she wants him to live through all of us. And that doesn't mean, you know, that does that is not mean getting revenge. That does not mean killing each other. Seattle police are actively investigating both shootings and cannot comment on if the two are related. But we know that Tuesday night shooting happened as people were still gathered from that vigil. Getting them books graduate high school, go to college, you know, or find a trade, whatever that is, my guys. So, you know, just, you know, just always try to just spread posit positivity throughout the community. Mentors spreading positivity after losing one of their brightest students. You check all the boxes, you do everything you can to make sure somebody makes it to college. And then this happens. And then you ask yourself, like, what more am I supposed to do? You know, or are we even doing enough? In Seattle, Jennifer Lee, Q13 News. So first I'm going to tell you guys, like, give you guys a little backstory on how we met. We met in fall of 2019 at a kickback. Um, we both had a mutual friend that introduced us. We'll call her Dee Dee just for the sake of this story. At the kickback, we exchanged numbers and after that it was just up. We were linking up, we would hang out and... We would just chill, we would watch movies, we would go to the movies, we would take walks around the neighborhood late at night. I know that probably doesn't sound safe, but it was just always cool, chill vibes. He would come to my mom's house, I would go to his mom's house, and it was just all around a good relationship. In the beginning, we dated for a couple of months and everything was good. Um, yeah, it was just really smooth. We weren't really the type of couple to like post pictures and stuff like that we were super like private with our relationship and it wasn't like any like secrecy or sneakiness going on it was just that's just how the both of us were and it was mutual and that's just what it was so we really enjoyed spending time with each other and yeah it was good for the first couple of months some random facts about adriel just to throw out there he was a premature baby he cared a lot about people he even went to mexico one time with his school to build houses in tijuana mexico to build houses for the less fortunate so that right there just shows the type of person that he was he liked to chill with family and friends um just that kind of stuff he 
loved teriyaki and rice that was his favorite food um he loved jordan shoes his shoes always had to match his shirt like no matter what and i will post the pictures so you guys know i'm not lying he was like strict on that so yeah um he graduated on time from an alternative school which was really good he i'm not gonna say he wasn't supposed to graduate on time but he had a lot of challenges and obstacles in front of him when it came to school he did go to a regular normal school and then later on transferred to the alternative school but yes he did graduate on time so i thought that was great that was amazing and it's not always easy to do that especially when you have the obstacles um in front of you that he did he really conquered so i was super proud of him for that and then something else about adriel he was just super funny and he loved to crack jokes <laughs> So a couple months later, um, we did end up breaking up and it wasn't like too serious. It was like a mutual thing. Um, so there's not really a whole lot to talk about around that. If I wanted to like get into detail, you could say I had some issues with the amount of time he was spending with friends. But again, I was 17, he was 18. So we were still young, we were st still exploring who we were as upcoming adults and I just didn't feel like I wanted to hold him back from any experiences that he might want to experience and he didn't really have like a problem with it he didn't fight me on it um he was super just gentle with me at all times and caring like I mentioned and he was very non-problematic so we just went our separate ways and it was a mutual thing we did um have each other on social media still after that for a couple of weeks that later on died out but that just goes to show like it was a very non-toxic breakup so we broke up about december it was yeah around december 2019 so keep that in mind because then a couple weeks after the breakup like I said, we still had each other on social media and stuff, but that later died down. Um, I found out January 22nd of 2020 that I was pregnant. So I find out that I'm pregnant and I didn't really tell anybody at first because I had had a miscarriage probably the year before. Yes, I did get pregnant when I was 16. I was in a long-term relationship at that time. So that doesn't give an excuse or I'm, I'm not condoning like teen pregnancies at all. But I just wanted to give you guys a little bit context around that situation. So I wasn't just out here just sleeping with anybody. I was in a three-year relationship with that person. Ended up having a miscarriage. And so when I found out I was pregnant, January 22nd of 2020, I was scared to tell Adriel. I was scared to tell friends. I think the only person I told was my mom. And that's because I was afraid that I was going to possibly miscarry again. So yeah, I was terrified of having a miscarriage. So I waited until I was about 12, 13 weeks to start telling people because that's really considered the safe zone. So I definitely wanted to hit that before I started spreading the news. So January passes and I just continue working. Um, I was working at Taco Time at the time. I'm working on getting back into school and I just had a lot of things set in place for myself in preparation for my baby. Even though I had at the time just found out I was pregnant, I automatically was on straight grind mode. So now we're falling into March of 2020 and I call my friend Dee Dee, the one who introduced Adriel and I at the kickback. And I tell her I'm pregnant because again, I hadn't told anybody until I hit that like 13 weeks. I told her and she was like super happy and she was asking like oh does he know does he know Ta speaking about adriel and i was like no he doesn't know so she was like girl you have to tell him so i was like okay i at this point didn't have him on social media like i mentioned earlier we on that only lasted a couple of weeks so i no longer had him on social media and i didn't have his number so i asked her to call him and put us on a three-way call so that is what she did when he answered she was the, the conversation basically was like hey adrio kayla has something to say she's on the phone and i'm like hey what's up how have you been he's like you know good small talk then i go well i have something to tell you he's like what's up i'm like i'm pregnant and the first thing that comes out of his mouth is well that's not my baby and i was like okay adrio i was super calm in my tone just like i'm talking now and i was like okay adrio we can get a dna test when the baby gets here that's no that's not a problem for me 
and he goes okay and that was like the end of the conversation I didn't get upset when he said that it hurt a little bit but I wasn't upset because I had to put myself in his shoes and understand his point of view of the situation and if someone if I were a male and someone came to me three months after knowing they were pregnant I would probably be like girl what the timeline probably wouldn't add up to me as a man the math ain't math ain't girl in a in a in a man's mind so I even at 17 understood that so I um again didn't get like but her or anything I just let it be what it what it was and I continued to work on myself and prepare for my son I was buying him everything he needed um diapers wipes you know clothes stuff like that strollers toys just everything a baby would need um I continued to work at taco time I continued to work on my school stuff and I was actually learning how to drive around that time as well so fast forward i hadn't spoke to adriel until that conversation in march fast forward to three months later it's now july of 2020 and i had an appointment july 17th it was an appointment to get a sonogram done but it was one of those sonograms where you can see your baby's facial features and i'll post my sons up here so you guys can see I went to that appointment with my mom and my younger sister my mom was like oh my gosh he looks just like his dad and I'm like girl I know so something after that appointment told me to send a picture the sonic one of the sonogram pictures to Adriel so he could see for himself like this little boy already looks just like you and he's not even up out the womb yet so something told me to send him the picture of my son but then something else told me like, no, nah, don't do it. Just wait until, you know, your baby is born so that you guys can get the DNA test and then he won't even have no questions. So I didn't even want to put myself in that predicament of like being rejected again if I were to send the picture. I didn't know how he would have responded responded to that. So ultimately, I decided not to send him the picture, which I would later on regrets so again i had my doctor's appointment july 17th 2020 i didn't send adriel the picture and three days later july 20th of 2020 at around 10 p.m at night adriel was violently murdered so i'm going to tell you guys the story of what happened and please keep in mind that i didn't even get this story until about three years after he had already died I didn't know for three years what happened that night what what transpired that night or any of the little nitty-gritty details that I know now so please just keep that in mind but I just want to make this story like as flowing as possible um so that it makes sense to you guys but yeah just keep that disclaimer just keep that in mind I didn't find all this stuff out until three years later so it goes like this it was adriel two other boys and one girl so it's four of them they're riding around in a car and it's not clear to me even to this day um why exactly they pulled over i've gotten a couple of different answers um like one of them was they needed to pull over to get something out of the gas station or something was wrong with the car um or an argument had sparked between the driver and the girl which was his girlfriend who he was messing with at the time so it's not very clear why they pulled over to this gas station but they did so the driver and the girlfriend they start arguing so then adriel and the other boy get out of the car and they spark up so that they can you know smoke so they're smoking adriel sends a text message to his mom which said i love you which like obviously isn't out of the norm because you know people tell their moms they love them all the time but usually his saying would be i'm good for the night that's how he would like let her know like hey i'm okay i'm in a safe place and you know i'll see you tomorrow or something like that so for him to say i love you and it was so late at night it was kind of like like he knew something was about to happen that's just my personal theory so 
A couple of minutes after he sent that message to his mom, shots started ringing out from all over the place. So shots are ringing out. The, f the friend who was driving, the one that was arguing with his girlfriend, hops in another car, hops out of the car they were initially driving in. He hops out of that car and he gets into another car that was at the gas station. Now it's unclear if this was someone that he knew that was um, coincidentally at the gas station or if this was like a complete stranger, but he gets shot, I believe in his foot or it was like his leg somewhere down there. He gets shot. So he hops in this other car and he takes off and goes to the hospital leaves everybody else in the midst of this chaos which i mean who am i to judge in this certain situation i don't even know what i would do but we don't know where the girl went um it's unclear where she went if she was ducking if she got in the car i don't know the boy who got out of the car with adriel he ends up getting shot in his butt and then adriel unfortunately was shot eight times and he is the only one who passed away so he got shot eight times and a lot of the bullets were in the left side of his body i did receive a copy of the corner coroner's report the autopsy photos the crime scene photos and the investigative investigative report so i have all of that so i was able to see like where he was shot at so he was shot all on the left side of his body mostly there was a shot in his chest there was a shot in his back i believe there was a shot in his neck there was a shot in his hand so without getting into like details um i will tell you the main things that were punctured um that caused his fatality so he was shot in his liver his heart and one of his lungs so he really didn't have too much of a fighting chance the thing that really makes me upset is that when the emts got there he was still alive actually he was you know without giving you guys like too gruesome of a visual you know he was choking on blood and gasping for air that always bothers me to this day and this is coming from his friend who stayed with him the one that got shot in the butt that got out the car with him to smoke he stayed with adriel even though he was also in pain and he, this is coming from him is that um he was still breathing when the emts got there gasping for air when the emts got there they stepped right over him to attend uh, attend to the friend who got shot in the butt they were trying to help him and he's like no get my brother get my brother he's gonna die and they're they're like you know it's already too late he's he's gone there's nothing we can do for him that is always really hard because he's still gasping for air even though he's got shot in all of these really serious places in the body he's still gasping for air and they already know like there's nothing they can do they didn't even attempt so that's really hard for me to grasp even though i know there was nothing they could do they didn't even attempt and that always just bothers me so after adriel was killed he was taken to a hospital i won't name the hospital but it's here in seattle washington um it's really big for its trauma unit so he was taken to this hospital and that's when his mother was called and notified that her son was in the hospital they didn't even tell her like your son is gone they told her he was in the hospital so she of course rushes to the hospital and she goes to the er she doesn't know what's going on and she's asking like you know telling them uh his name and stuff and they're looking in their system and they're like ma'am we don't have anybody by that name and so they're looking up under john doe names and they're just like ma'am we don't have a patient under that name and she's like tripping because she's like you guys just called me and told me that my son is here so stop playing with me so she's really upset at this point and come to find out they had taken him um i don't know what they call it in the hospital because i'm not too familiar with all this stuff but i could be wrong so don't quote me but it was like that where they take dead bodies like if someone dies in the hospital they're gonna take them all the way downstairs to this little like morgue i guess you could say they had taken adriel down there they never told her that again they called and said your son is in in the hospital 
So I say all that to say they didn't even let his mother identify his body. They actually identified him because he had braces. So that's how they knew it was him and that's how they were able to call his mom. That is basically what happened and there's a lot more details as to what happened that night but I won't go into all of those little nitty gritty details. I just wanted to give you guys um, a, a very broad version um, and very general version of what happened that night. Um, kind of get straight to the point. That is how the unfortunate events transpired leading to my son's father's death. I didn't find anything out until the next day. It was July 21st of 2020. I woke up like any other day. I'm getting myself ready. Um, I had work this day, but later on I would end up calling out. And, you know, I'm getting ready to make my breakfast. And I start scrolling on my phone. And I'm on Facebook. And I don't know where you guys are from but where i'm from facebook in my city is like a big thing some people say like oh it's for old people but in my city everybody dang near has a facebook so i hop on facebook and i'm scrolling and everybody's just doing the general you know cracking jokes posting pictures of themselves and then i start seeing posts that are hashtag long live adria long live adi lla and i'm like what I was so confused it was like I was taken aback for a second I'm like hold on this must be a joke so I go to Adriel's actual Facebook page and keep in mind we didn't have each other blocked we just didn't have each other as friends on there so I'm still able to scroll through his posts and see what people are posting on his timeline and I'm seeing the same thing RIP I can't believe this is true why did this happen why you not my brother not my nephew um just all kind of stuff long live Adriel and I'm like in shock come like what so then I see a um, news article and I'll post it up here this is the exact news article that I saw um, about a shooting on 23rd and Cherry which is in a street in Seattle um, that, th that that gas station was on so I'm like what and then it hit me like a, a train and I'm like he's dead my son's father is dead and I hadn't talked to him for three months at this point so I'm like he's dead it didn't make any sense to me and I was in shock obviously and then the waterworks just happened and I started bawling my eyes out I tell my mom I tell my sister because that's who I was living with at the time and then I call my best friend who at the time lived in the same apartment complex as me and she comes over and we just start crying and it was just a really sad day so my mom was dating someone at the time we're gonna call him jay for the sake of this video and he worked actually at the alternative school that adriel had just graduated from he worked there as i believe like some sort of mentor or something like that so he was you know his colleagues were the teachers that were adriel's teachers and so the teachers were planning a vigil for adriel later that day on july 21st of 2020 the day after he was killed the teachers were putting a vigil together for him and a balloon release so i you know told jay he knew what happened already so i told him like when you figure out more information about the vigil i would like to come and he was like girl i will bring you and i was like okay even better again i ended up calling out of work and Jay ended up coming over picking me up and I actually have my younger sister come with me as well just to be some sort of like emotional support for me because I just didn't know how I was about to handle it like I was about to be standing in the same parking lot that my son's father his life was just taken in this parking lot and I'm about to be standing there and I didn't know how I was going to feel so I had my younger sister come um, just as like emotional support. The candlelight was extremely touching. Two, two, three. I felt Adriel's spirit all around and it was super emotional. Um, I'll post a picture of myself. I did take a little picture. 
and I was six months pregnant you probably can't tell because I was wearing all black but yes I was pregnant so I was already emotional because I was pregnant but this just added a new level to it so I had some glasses on because my eyes were so puffy from crying all morning that by the time I got to the vigil they were like they felt like they were like unable to open that's how it felt so I had kept the sunglasses on and I was just bawling and bawling and there was so many people friends family um, strangers even and people from the community teachers just all kinds of people from all different walks of life came to show love to Adriel and show love to his mom and just be there in this moment come to find out no one ended up knowing who I was so I probably just looked like one of the strangers that showed up his mom knew who I was but her mind was everywhere she wasn't focused on me at all um, but I did go up to her and I said my condolences and we cried and it was just very emotional at his vigil. Next would be his funeral and I was unfortunately not invited to his funeral. Again, this is in 2020 so it's COVID. Um, he had basically two funerals. It was one day and then it was the next day. So that first funeral, only 50 people were allowed. Obviously you had to wear masks and everything. And then the second funeral, same thing, 50 people had to wear masks. And then there was a, a virtual funeral. So I think it was recorded during the first funeral. They recorded the whole you know, session of the funeral and it was, um, you were able to watch it if you got this special link from the funeral home. Like it was attached to the funeral home's YouTube. I don't know how it all worked but yeah I was given this special link by Jay and that's how I was able to attend the funeral but I was super I would say upset I was upset because I didn't get that closure like a lot of other people who I feel like weren't as close to Adriel so I feel like it was definitely hard that I wasn't able to be one of those 50 either time um, and later on they would come out that you know nobody knew about me or that I was pregnant with his child so that is a big reason why I was not invited but it still hurts and it's still something that I find hard to cope with so after his funeral which I don't remember if it was like the end of July or if it was the beginning of August but it was one or the other that timeline is very like foggy for me so I'm sorry you guys um, but about two months later, October 1st, our son was born and my older sister was the only one that was with me. Yeah. This is always what's important to me. Mm. Say hi, Kamari. Hey. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. So, are you ready for me? She has two since passed, but I will forever be grateful that I got to share that experience with her. She was always so supportive, even when Adriel first passed away. Um, and this is not my younger sister that came with me to the vigil. This is my older sister. She came with me when I gave birth to my son and I just felt so much love with her being there. She cut my son's umbilical cord and it was just a very special moment for us. She stayed in the hospital for the two days with us and everything and I felt Adriel's energy around me. It's hard to explain but I felt he was there um, guiding my son and myself through that birthing experience and i had a very smooth birthing experience so i was very thankful for that it was a couple of weeks after my son was born probably about three weeks um that i waited to post a picture of him and when i posted a picture of him adriel's friends whom i had on social media i guess got back to his mom and was like yo this girl that you know used to be with Adriel a couple months ago because you know it's like nine ten months had passed they're like you know we remember this girl from a while ago and you know this baby looks a lot like your son so his mom actually ended up reaching out to me via Facebook messenger to like ask me like hey is this my son's baby because that's like the rumors that I'm starting to hear based off these pictures you're posting and keep in mind I hadn't reached out to his family to let them know that I was pregnant because I felt like that weight was not mine I was very hurt and upset at Adriel 
that he didn't tell his family because then that left a big burden on me now i have to come to your family after you pass and tell them this news and i didn't know how they were going to receive that i was terrified of like the rejection part of it so i was like i'm just not going to tell them at all i'll just take care of my son all by myself so that was the plan and i was fine with that i had an amazing support system my mom is like my number one person in my corner at all times and she's still to this day my son is almost four and she has been that number one role model um when it comes to helping me out with my son so i didn't have a problem with not telling them i was just gonna let it be what it what it was and go on with life so when his mom reached out to me it was kind of like not expected and it wasn't like part of my plan that I had just went over in my head of hey I'm gonna do this alone so she reaches out to me and that's how we got connected um, also keep in mind I didn't want to tell her like around the time that his vigil was when I had last seen her because her son just died keep in mind that was her only child only child ever so I didn't want to lay that all out on her in such a traumatic time like it would have been way too much for her to handle and i didn't want to overwhelm her when she already had so much going on and she just started grieving her son it was just not the right time and place so that's why i didn't tell her when i saw her last at the candle um the candlelight the vigil so she reaches out to me and she's like you know i would love to get a dna test done if possible so that i can know like if i have a grandson this would be like the only thing left of my son so I would like to know and I was more than open and welcome to doing that for her um, so that's what we did I found a place and I believe we went half on the place I think it was like only $200 so we both put in a hundred dollars um, we went to go get the DNA test taken and at first it came back like 50% and I guess they couldn't really count that as like a firm answer and that's because we had only gotten my son and Adriel's mother tested so then they the the DNA test place was like um, where's Adriel's father we need to have him come in as well so we can test both of his parents so it would be Adriel's mom and Adriel's dad that would be getting tested the second time around instead of just Adriel's mom because it wasn't coming up all the way up So it wasn't making sense. So we located his father, Adriel's father, which is Adriel Sr. Because my Adriel was a junior. So we locate Adriel Sr. And he comes in to do the DNA test. So they do it a second time. We wait about three days. And then we all got emails. And it obviously came back 99.999%. So that is how we were still able to do the DNA test even after Adriel passed. So his mom, Adriel's mom posted, you know, after finding out that my son was theirs, she made a whole bunch of posts on Facebook and she had a lot of people reaching out to her obviously because her son just passed away. So she had a lot of outpour and love and support and when it came down to her announcing that she had a grandson and that this was just a blessing from the Lord um, because when all hope was lost she just found out she had a grandson after her son was killed a couple months ago so she was over the top ecstatic happy and everyone that she knew was also happy for her so I was happy that I could give that to her and that she didn't have to feel like she was at a complete loss. So a couple months later, we now had to start to learn to have a relationship with each other without Adriel being there. And that was extremely hard because we have different personalities. We're coming from two different generations. We have two different ways of parenting. And in a way she tried to step in like she was my baby dad <laughs> and that didn't go too well at first. We definitely had to learn how to cope how to grieve Adriel's death and raise my son um, together because at first it was like her and I were now a team. It was us against the world because nobody else was experiencing the level of the level and depth of loss that we were. 
So fast forward about a year after Adriel's death, I I was so lost and I didn't know where to even start to grieve. So I ended up joining this amazing group and I'm not gonna put the group name out there just for personal reasons. I joined this group and it was amazing. It was a group of other mothers who had lost their children's fathers as well so it's other children that can relate to my son and it's other mothers that can relate exactly to like my circumstances every situation was different some people were married to their partner when their partner was murdered some people were so like far apart from their partner and had like domestic issues with them um, some people had custody issues with the children, so they obviously weren't getting along. Some people were dating. Some people were, um, like me, just hadn't talked to their children's father in a long time. So it was a lot of different situ like circumstances, but the situation was the same. All of these fathers and partners were taken due to gun violence. Two, three, happy birthday! So these children were all in the same boat of this level of hurt, pain, and loss that they would one day need tools to figure out how to deal with. So for us mothers, they would always provide us um, these weekly activities. And you can feel the vibrations emitting from it. And grieving, um, therapy sessions, just a lot they provided a lot and they definitely started me on my path to grieving they set me on um, a path to where I could figure out where I wanted to go with this um, I didn't have to always be angry that's what I figured out through being in this group I could be okay and I can move forward and I might not I would never forget Adriel and the things that happened to him the life that he never got to experience as an adult and as a father but I didn't have to be angry about that I could learn to accept it and I would never accept the way that he was taken but I can forgive the people who took his life and I can do that for myself to be able to move forward and not feel guilty because our last conversation didn't go as expected and then he passes away I felt that survivor's guilt in a way like why me my son deserves his dad why couldn't it be me and you know he he has his dad and I felt I thought that that was more important at the time so I had to accept the situation for what it was and that I was here with my son and that I had to do this and this was my ultimate test from the Lord and now it's my testimony so Adriel's case is technically still a cold case. Um, July 20th, 2024 will mark four years that his case has been unsolved. So with me being in this group, they were actually able to help me with a lot of things to get justice in other ways. A few things that I've done in honor of Adriel and trying to keep his memory alive. I do a b balloon release every year for his birthday. I have also been on the news to tell more about his story and try to have people reach out if they have any um, information about his specific case. He wants to increase the budget for gun violence prevention from $1.5 million to $2.1 million. That's about a 30% increase. Now families of gun violence victims say they don't have a perfect solution, but they know something needs to change. We have our, he doesn't know his dad at all. Yeah, he doesn't know his dad. He's only gonna know him through pictures and memories. That alone breaks my heart. No one has been arrested for Adriel's murder. Kayla hopes for justice to be served and for changes to be made to prevent further gun violence in Seattle. It's hard. I have also wrote a book 
which is available on Amazon. It's called The Pain We Weep Beyond the Cold Case. Um, I'll put the information in the description box below. My book is only $25 if you'd like to check that out. It goes more in depth um, about his life and about um, our relationship together. And then I've also sued the gas station that he was killed at. And I won't go into the nitty ditty nitty gritty details about that, but I did sue the gas station and won that lawsuit. Some things that I have done to help me cope with this situation definitely um, has been to turn towards my faith with the Lord, get more active in my church. Like I said, I mentioned the group. Um, which helped a lot. I'm no longer in that group. So I've definitely had to venture off and find um, some sort of comfort within myself because for so long I turned to this um, other group of women who've been through similar experiences to, you know, help me through my healing journey. But since I'm no longer in the group, I do, like I said, go to church more. Um, I write more in my journal I take me days for sure and give myself grace and I'm kind to myself I'm patient with myself and I definitely do not try to rush this grieving process because Lord knows how long this could take it could be the rest of my life the skills that I choose to use to cope with um, will determine how my future goes definitely church talking to people around me my support system whenever I'm feeling down writing in my journal and writing letters I write letters to Adriel sometimes um, I'll have my son write letters as he gets older to his dad so that you can release some of those feelings of sadness or whatever feelings you're feeling writing things down um, can really go a long way so I definitely use that and I'm also in therapy all right you guys so that was everything for today as always I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me and tuning in I hope that this touched your heart in any kind of way shape or form my son didn't have a father as he entered this world that is so it's mind-blowing It's hard to wrap your head around. So anyone that's going down the wrong path, I would just say, please, please see that there is good in you and that you can change your life around. And it's not worth it at the end of the day. All these gangs and stuff like that, you know, they tried to say that Adriel's death was related to gang activity. And that could be far from the truth because he had just graduated. He had plans. And was already enrolled into a college and so he had so much more life to live and things to accomplish and that was just all ripped away from him for what for no reason at all i would definitely say to people that are going down the wrong path to just think about what you're doing turn to god turn to therapy turn to school turn to a mentor somebody um something so that you can change your life around and be a positive role model one day for someone else and be a positive member of society. All right, you guys, so again, I do, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate you tuning in and spending your time with me today and listening to my story, my son's story and Adriel's story. Um, I truly do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. If you like this video or you can relate in any way, please give it a like, please comment your thoughts. Or questions or concerns please share this video and get adriel terrell webb jr's name out there and share his story um and don't forget to subscribe as well as hit that post notification bell so that you are notified every single time that i post all right y'all until next episode i need miss you i might run to them blues and get to flex bro yeah. work on your bitch and that bitch is reckless bitch is reckless work on this nigga she you know i'm straight no i'm definitely pull up to the yeah, bitch yeah. with the purple yeah. yeah. scar okay. yeah. 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 i'm gonna know smoke so i gave it to the bars you know what i do bitch yeah. i stay with them checks bitch yeah. I